Hi, I'm Kasker. I've been producing electronic music for more than 15 years now and mostly drum and bass. In this course, I'll walk you through how I produce a drum and bass track from start to finish. I'll be covering track arrangement, sound design, melodies, drum arrangement, synth layering, mix down, mastering and everything else that goes into producing a finished drum and bass track. We'll dive into an iterative workflow process where track elements are changing and evolving as the track nears completion. This process enables fast structuring and sketching of a full track where elements can be swapped out or completely scrapped later on in the process. You will also get the final project file, including all presets and samples used. Hi, this is Kasker and you are watching my drum and bass course for DMB Academy. Let's move this a, bit, this a bit and let's see, maybe we can make some sort of an intro here uh, just to make, uh, like, do the start of the song so we have everything done in this part and then we can do maybe some sort of a breakdown that leads up to a second drop and maybe an outro of sorts. Uh, we'll see how far we're going to get with the arrangement, but uh, let's try to see here what we can do. There was actually one thing I wanted to try. Um, started using some uh, like granular synthesis and just some like uh, granulizers in general so i think we're going to try to export some of these sounds out and then put them through a pretty cool plugin um show you here which is called quanta and uh basically you can drop in samples and you can get these little grains here um and it's basically just like a a more advanced uh, granulizer but let's try to um, let's try to actually export something first let's just take this whole thing here export it i'm just gonna export it as a, a wave file here there we go gonna reload here just put it in a folder over here and then we are gonna open quanta and we are just gonna drag and drop the sound into here and let's see what we can get out of it. It might be cool to use for the intro and for the breakdown and stuff. So gotta put in a note that it's gonna play. Start with here and then Quanta has like a, a, an oscillator here that we are just gonna remove I think. You can hear it's doing some weird stuff already. And then what you can do is you can pick how many grains you want, how long they're gonna be, and especially the position is fun to play with. You can move it around in your sample. So let's play here, from here. Cool thing is that you can place it somewhere and uh, you can then pick uh, randomness on the position. So now it's gonna pick like different spots in your uh, sample here. Very cool. Let's try to add uh, some more uh, grains here and maybe some more randomness to it. And maybe even more randomness to this. And we have a pretty interesting sound at least already. Let's see what else can we do here. This bit with shape, it's pretty cool. Yeah, you can get like really like plucky uh, with really sharp envelope here. Um, the length you can also adjust. That would be really long. <laughs> you can like pick random tunes. You can pick the direction also if you wanted to go forwards or backwards instead. to do random before is fine okay let's try to put this into our mixer here and and do some stuff with it let's see if we can use this for anything cool
Now we can actually hear it. <laughs> it's a pretty cool sound. And then you can, uh, of course, start to like uh, automate different stuff in this thing. Let's see here, what we can do. Maybe automate the grains up. Maybe that could sound kind of cool. So let's put it in here. Let's see what we can can get out of this. Let's try to uh, automate the grains here. Not sure how high we want it to go, but uh, let's try to make it go pretty high. See how that sounds. Started a bit up. I think we are going to make it way too high here. So it's kind of like random. It's like some random, almost sort of like organic feel to it because it's it's not like it's not um, it's not really following any tempo or anything. Which I think it's kind of cool to have some elements that are just a bit more freestyling. We can even go in here and maybe move it down. Maybe that's better. Sounds pretty cool. And then what I'll usually do, because every time you're going to play this, it's going to sound different. So you definitely want to go in and record this, export it out and then uh, maybe chop up some of the more interesting uh, parts of it. Uh, so I'm going to render it out uh, without any effects on, and then uh, we're going to see if we can find some cool parts here we can use. Yes. And now we can also maybe just normalize it. So. Can turn it a bit down in here, it's probably going to be super loud. And we can either, we can just put this to the side out here if we ever want to mess with it again. Let's hear how our render sounded. There's definitely some, uh, some cool uh, parts in here I think we can use for sure. Maybe we can start somehow with this in the beginning, like... Maybe it's a bit too offbeat. Let's try to get a hat in here. Then I can a bit better hear how... Okay, it's like completely offbeat here, but now we can just uh, do whatever we want with this, so... Say we want it to be a bit more on beat, we can like move it around as we please. Maybe to keep it a bit off beat. This could be like a part of the intro here. And then maybe switch it up here to this part. Maybe take part from here, chop it up a bit. Move this one over, maybe. It 
Sounds pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Let's see if it's actually going to fit in with what we got so far. I'm just going to try to put in this reason here. I think it's not in the right key, actually. Let's see what else do we have of some instruments I can put in. Maybe this. Uh, we have to pitch it around. I think I put it in, in the wrong key. But it's fine, we can just pitch it. Here we go. Let's see. to uh, straightforward here, I think. Maybe we should try to pitch it up instead. I'm not quite sure. That's better. And maybe then filter this uh, Reese thingy in somehow. Gonna make maybe the intro this long, like here. Maybe we need to make it even like simpler in the beginning, so less plugs. Like Pretty cool. Maybe we can save this. Maybe we're gonna use it later. But uh, yeah, it's a cool way to get like uh, to kind of resample your own sense. So you already have something, and then you wanna add some extra elements to go in the intro and the breakdown. So you can just take the elements you already have and like uh, shape them into something different to use in other parts of the track. And the good thing about this is that hopefully, because they are sampled from. Uh, some of the things we're using later in the track, it's going to fit in somehow. Hi, I'm Kasker. I've been producing electronic music for more than 15 years now, and mostly drum and bass. In this course, I'll walk you through how I produce a drum and bass track from start to finish. I'll be covering track arrangement, sound design, melodies, drum arrangement, synth layering, mixdown, mastering and everything else that goes into producing a finished drum and bass track. 
we'll dive into an iterative workflow process where track elements are changing and evolving as the track nears completion. This process enables fast structuring and sketching of a full track where elements can be swapped out or completely scrapped later on in the process. You will also get the final project file, including all presets and samples used. Hi, this is Kasker and you are watching my drum and bass course for DMB Academy.